Miss Kate. I'm a youth services librarian at the Jersey City Free Public Library. And today I'll be reading The Story of Isaac, The Story of Discovery and Friendship by Thomas McDowell Jr. Before we dive into the book, be warned that there is some adult language and violence in this story. Chapter One, Unity and Prosperity. Isaac, breakfast is ready. Ashley, Isaac's mom, screamed from the kitchen downstairs. Be right there, Isaac said while stumbling, trying to put his uniform on for school. Isaac doesn't really like the idea of the uniforms, but the school Isaac goes to, Oakwood High School, has a dress code rule, and Oakwood High School is one of the top schools in the state. So Isaac is willing to sacrifice some of his freedom to make his mother happy and attend this school. Isaac loved his mother more than anything in the world because his mother is one of the only core family members he has since his father died when he was 11 and was only a child. Isaac really only has faint memories about his father. His father was busy working most of the time. Isaac, did you sleep well, my beautiful? Isaac mom said with a smile. Yes, mom, Isaac reported back, making sure to not show his fangs when speaking. Showing your fangs or teeth is considered rude, especially when speaking to herbivores, and since Isaac was a red fox, he abided by these rules. He doesn't mind these rules. It's just a part of being a carnivore nowadays. You can't be successful in this world without making some sacrifices in life. That's at least what his mother tells him. After finishing breakfast, which was pancakes, toast, and eggs, Isaac grabbed his bag, kissed his mother on the cheek, and started walking to the bus stop. Love you, Isaac! Isaac's mom screamed from the front porch as if she was trying to embarrass her son. Isaac kept walking, trying to hide his embarrassment. Isaac! I know you hear me! Isaac's mom said in a stern manner as to assert her dominance as a mother. Love you too, mom! Isaac said, finally giving in to her, his mother's wishes. Isaac, bro, your mom screamed so loud, I think my grandma heard her and she's dead, Joshua said to Isaac in a joking manner. Joshua, a Rhodesian Ridgeback, has been Isaac's best friend since elementary school. They always went to the same school and liked the same things. If Isaac was there, Joshua was right behind him. I wonder when or if she will ever stop doing that. She probably never will stop, Joshua said. She probably won't stop. Isaac finally agreed while he was distracted by the bus that was approaching them. The bus quickly came to a halt. Isaac and Joshua quickly got on the bus, making sure to watch out for any smaller animals that are also on the bus. Isaac and Joshua usually sit in the back of the bus to avoid any confrontation with animals big or small. Isaac was not one for conflict, and Joshua, being his best friend, simply complied with his request. Isaac may be a red fox, but he was never one to cause trouble. He was a quiet kid, keeping to himself, and is caught most of the time hiding in the background. However, he was part of the school newspaper, which was sort of a big deal since Oakwood High School had the best news department out of any school in the state. Every couple of years, a student from the paper was chosen to meet the president as a representative of species cohesiveness and prosperity. But only news reporters were the ones known to get picked to do such a thing. Isaac didn't do any going out or anything like that. Isaac really just edited the school newspapers, which Isaac didn't really complain about. Isaac actually prefers it that way. The school board said that it is best suited for his personality. But Isaac knew deep down the reason he was an editor for the school newspaper and not the news reporter. In Oakwood High School, only really herbivores are reporters. Herbivores have a more friendly and harmless appearance than carnivores. Isaac, also being a lower middle class red fox, which is stereotyped to be one of the most untrustworthy carnivores, understood why he was a part of the editor team. Isaac was not the only one that was on the editor team. There were a total of four other members of the editor team. Birdie, a beautiful female orange weaver, Finch, that is relatively quiet. Chess, a small male wisecracking black squirrel. Mr. Troy, a wise male Sri Lankan elephant, the oldest of the team and president of the editor team. And last but not least, Xavier, a proud male panthera leo 
Ryan. A 17-year-old carnivore student shot and killed by an herbivore police officer. What a shame, Xavier said in a remorseful tone while sipping a glass of milk he got from the school cafeteria. I imagine the police officer was scared, that's all. Carnivores are much stronger than herbivores are, Bertie said. He was probably just... Bullshit. That kid was unarmed and did what the police asked him to do. It was just a hate crime against carnivores. Xavier interrupted with a quiet but yet still intimidating snarl in his voice. The room fell silent with tension. The tension was so strong that it was as if you could hear and feel the breaths from the mouths of the shocked students. Xavier, calm down. You're scaring everybody, Mr. Troy said, trying to calm the room. Xavier looked around the room, eyes stricken with fear. I'm sorry, guys. I don't know what got over me, Xavier said with guilt. It's just that no need to explain yourself, Xavier, Mr. Troy stated. Yeah, we all know that carnivores can't control themselves, Chess said in an annoyed manner. Leave it to an herbivore to start assuming things. You know, I'm tired of herbivores always acting so defenseless and weak all the goddamn time. That police officer wasn't defenseless when he shot and killed that carnivore teenager. Xavier quarreled back at Chess. That's enough. I know that this incident is upsetting, but arguing about it isn't going to change anything. We'll discuss more about this after school. Mr. Troy said scornfully. You guys should be heading to class anyway. School officially starts in 10 minutes. Mr. Troy interrupted and said with solace. But Mr. Troy, if we don't finish these papers by tomorrow, then the student bodies are going to kill us. Isaac ex exclaimed in a worrisome manner. You guys don't have to worry. I will finish the rest of these. There is not much left anyway, Mr. Troy said in a regretful tone, looking at the large stack of papers in the corner. Yes, Mr. Troy, everybody said in unison. There has been increased tension in Oakwood High School since there was an incident where a carnivore student was shot and killed by an herbivore police officer a couple days ago. Ever since that incident, things have been kind of rough at Oakwood High School. The tension is sometimes so strong that it's as if you can slice it clean in half with a knife. When Isaac and Joshua walk in the halls, they often get worried stares by their herbivore classmates and peers. Sometimes they hear the awful things that the students say as they walk by, like, be cautious around him, or don't talk to them, they can be trouble. But they choose to ignore them, because they're just scared kids and don't really know any better. However, they would like if they got to know them rather than just make assumptions about them. Can you believe those guys? What assholes? Joshua said angrily while grabbing his lunchbox out of his locker. Don't worry about it. They don't know any better, Isaac said, as if he was trying to convince himself that his words are true. But deep down, he knows that they don't trust them because they're carnivores. Bullshit. You know what they're mean. You know that they're mean to us like that because we're carnivores, Joshua said, his voice raised with frustration. Isaac said, his eyes wandering, looking at the animals, staring back at him. Quiet down. You're drawing attention. I don't give a damn what the other animals think. This ain't fair to us, or any carnivores for that matter. You should know better than anyone. Don't you think it's kind of strange how your mom works the exact same job as our fellow classmates' parents, but somehow they are in the upper class while you and your mom are in the lower middle class? Joshua said sternfully. Isaac just kept quiet. He didn't know how to respond to this outbreak. Part of him did question these things from time to time, but he would never have expected it to come out of someone else's mouth, let alone his best friend. Isaac just kept to himself, but in his mind, he knew that Joshua was right. Let's just head to lunch. All right. Isaac crashed to the floor. Isaac, are you okay? Joshua asked. You need to watch where you're going, a rhino said in an aggressive tone. Isaac, in an apologetic tone, said, Sorry, I, I didn't mean to cause no trouble. I was just... Leave it to a carnivore to start something. Why don't you go steal a candy bar or something? <laughs> The rhino said, laughing hysterically. The cafeteria began to fill up with the students' laughter. Give the kid a break, a random voice said from the crowd. It's hard right now. I know it is with all the police stuff and killings going around, but starting fights is not the way we do it, especially at Oakwood High School. That would just cause more tension and harm, and we don't want that, do we? The random voice said with pride and compassion. What the fuck are you doing here? The rhino said angrily. Oh, me, I'm just getting lunch like everyone else when I happen to spot a student bullying another student. The mysterious kid said with confidence. So what is it to you? The rhino asked upset. Well, 
my job as president and lead news reporter of this school is to ensure that all species communicate and work together in unison. It wouldn't be nice to see your little incident and get around the school paper and ruin your reputation, would it? I can see it now. Rhino commits hate crime against fellow Fox student, the competent kid said with a smirk on his face. Come on, dude, let's get out of here, one of the Rhino's friends said. Mm, fine, the Rhino huffed. The crowd cheered and praised the mysterious kid for his heroic act. The crowd chanted encouraging words like, What a nice guy! And he's so charming! You gotta be more careful around here, kid. Animals like me won't always be there to save you, the mysterious kid said. By the way, what is your name, kid? The mysteriously competent kid said. Uh, Isaac. My name is Isaac, Isaac said, baffled and amazed by this kid's president presence. Well, Isaac... My name is Nicholas. Nicholas the Tool Elk, Nicholas said with confidence. Well, it was nice meeting you, Isaac. Oh, and don't forget who you are. You're a carnivore and a fox. Take advantage of that, Nicholas said as he turned around to exit the cafeteria. Isaac, still on the floor amazed on how much respect an animal can get, let alone an herbivore. There was no fear in his eyes. It was as if he was a carnivore in his own right. When he spoke, all the eyes in the cafeteria stopped to watch and listen to him. All the females gazed into his eyes and adored him. All the guys looked up to him and respected him. Like light shining through the curtains, Nicholas beamed proudness and strength for all species. Was he the next kid to be chosen to meet the president and be the symbol of species prosperity and unity? Isaac thought to himself. Dude, you've been on the floor for like three minutes. Get up, Joshua said in a somewhat embarrassed tone. Oh, yeah, sorry about that, Isaac stated. No need to apologize. Let's just get out of here. The way those girls stared at that Nicholas guy kind of creeped me out, Joshua said to Isaac with a hand over his mouth. Uh, uh, okay, Isaac said with a smirk, trying to hide his laughter. Chapter 2. Predators and Prey Bro, did you see how those guys reacted to that Nicholas guy? It was nuts. All the girls bent heads and heels just at the sight of him. Joshua exclaimed, still not quite sure what happened. Yeah, he was something, Isaac murmured under his breath. What do you think he meant by you're a carnivore and a fox? Take advantage of it, Isaac asked Joshua. You're overthinking it, dude. He simply is just saying that you should be proud of who you are and stop trying to hide it. You're a fox and a carnivore. Embrace it. Joshua said, huh. It amazes me how even though he was an herbivore, he still had the courage to stand up to a fellow herbivore to help a carnivore, a red fox, Isaac said to himself while looking at his paws in deep thought. You're overthinking it, dude. Come on, we're going to be late to history class. The two boys began to head to class. Good afternoon, class. Today, we are going to take a deeper look into the history of animals and how the predator-prey war came to be, teacher proclaimed, trying to gather the attention of the rowdy class. Anybody know what caused the predator-prey war in the first place? Courtney quickly raised her hand. The teacher acknowledged her. Yes, Courtney. Well, the predator-prey war began 200 years ago, and the war lasted for about 10 years. What exactly started the war was a disagreement between leader tribes. Correct, Courtney. It was a disagreement between leader tribes, the teacher said, showing reassurance to Courtney's answer. Carnivore and herbivore tribes, to be exact. You see, the herbivore tribe were known to more to be settlers, since they are naturally smaller in frame and stature. While on the other hand, carnivores were known to be nomads and are naturally bigger and stronger. When the herbivores first met the carnivores, they didn't know how to react to them. Carnivores being more naturally outgoing and friendly don't really mesh well with herbivores' introverted lifestyle. But the two tribes made it work. They worked in unison and harmony for years to come. However, one day, a male herbivore tribe member was out during a late winter night. It had just finished raining, the rocks still slippery and slick. The young tribe member, not knowing any better, decided it would be fun to climb the treacherous mountain of Valkyrie alone. However, the conditions were too dangerous to climb that mountain. The young herbivore, while climbing the mountain, slipped and fell. The only thing separating him from death was a single branch. The young herbivore, in great pain, screamed in agony and cried for help. 
Luckily, a female carnivore tribe member heard his cries for help and came rushing to save him. However, she was too late. The boy wasn't strong enough and lost grip. The girl came rushing to him, crying over his dead, lifeless corpse. The tribes, hearing the commotion, woke up and came rushing to the scene. They saw the dead herbivore boy and blamed his death on the carnivore girl. And that's how the war began. The bell went off right in the nick of time. Everybody started packing their bags and headed out of the classroom. Make sure you do your homework. Oh, and don't forget to read chapters three to seven tonight and take notes. The teacher exclaimed, knowing that only about half the class heard what he said. Courtney, I have to ask, did you understand half the stuff the teacher was asking about? Or did you just act like you knew what he was talking about? Xavier asked, trying to figure out her true intentions. Of course I understood what he was talking about. If you just read chapter one like you were supposed to, you would have known that stuff already. Courtney said with an attitude. How do they expect me to be able to edit all those news articles and read all those chapters in a day, huh? Xavier said sarcastically. Well, I managed to go to the drama club rehearsal and finish all my, har all my work, so... Courtney quickly and audaciously replied. Courtney always knew what to say and when to say it. Even though she is an herbivore, she's not afraid to stand her ground. Well, give it up to Courtney. She can dance and be a nerd at the same time. Xavier teasingly said. <laughs> the group of boys chuckled with a hand over their mouth as if to hide their laughter. Aren't you part of the newspaper editor team? How manly, Courtney said sarcastically with her hands on her hips. Hey, editing those papers is hard work. Without the editor team, how do you expect Oakwood High School to know what's going on around school and around town? Chess said proudly, making sure to have Xavier's back. Yeah, Chess is right, Xavier blindly agreed with Chess. Oh, crap, look at the time. Club meetings start in half an hour, and we have a lot of papers to edit. Xavier realized, looking at his watch. Bye, Courtney. The two boys screamed out to her while making a run to the news reporter club. Bye, Xavier. Bye, Chess. Don't forget to do your homework. Courtney screamed back at them. Those two are something else. Courtney let out a sigh, which slowly turned into a smile. The two boys ran to the news report team as fast as they could. Sorry, we're late, Mr. Mr. Troy. The two boys said, still trying to catch their breath. You guys are late for the fourth time this week, Mr. Troy said, not taking an eye off the article he was reading. Xavier frantically said, trying to explain himself. We're sorry, Mr. Troy. We won't let it happen again. We were just talking to a friend. No, no, no. I don't want to hear excuses. One, maybe two mistakes may be an accident. But four times, it then becomes a bad habit. Don't let this incident become a bad habit. You hear me? Mr. Troy said in a stern, speech-like manner. Yes, Mr. Troy, the two boys said in unison. Don't take my kindness for weakness. You hear me? Now let's get to work. Luckily, two other team members already started editing an interesting lead, Mr. Troy said while pointing at Isaac and Bertie. Bertie, Isaac, what you got for us? Well, most of it's boring nonsense, such as parent-teacher meetings, club invitations, and drama club shows, Bertie said in an uninterested manner. Wait a sec. I think I got something to bring to the table. There was a, another cop killing of an herbivore incident la downtown at Central Park, Isaac said in a saddened tone. Another one? Come on, was one not enough for them? Xavier said in a sarcastic tone. Xavier, settle down. We don't necessarily know the whole story. Like Bertie said the other day, they could have been scared or afraid, Isaac said, trying to find a reason in his words and situation. Are you trying to defend them, Isaac? Xavier said in an assertive tone. No, I just think that maybe they aren't all in the wrong and that there is more to this story than the papers have to show, Isaac said with, the, with not the most confidence. I don't need evidence. Fuck you. Don't need to be so fucking genius to know that an herbivore killed a carnivore in cold blood. <laughs> the door sounded before opening. Nicholas, you're here. How was it out there? Mr. Troy said in a surprised manner. It was the usual, talking to a couple students about what they like about this school and what they think the school needs to do to be better. Same old, same old, Nicholas said, preoccupied with the stacks of news articles on the table. Well, Nicholas, do you need anything? Mr. Troy asked. Can you guys give Isaac and I a couple of minutes to ourselves, please? Thank you, Nicholas asked with a smile. Oh, all right, then no problem. We'll go. Everybody out, Mr. Troy said, trying to shuffle everybody out. 
Now it was just Nicholas and Isaac alone in the dark room. The only light that could be found were, was the light from the lamps the editors used while reading news articles. So what do you need from me, Isaac? Er, so what do you need me for, Nicholas, Isaac said, still unsure why he wanted him out of all the animals to speak with. Well, Isaac, I need you to go on a little trip with me and the news reporter team. I need you to keep watch while the team and I go downtown Central Park, Nicholas said with a devious smile on his face. Why would you choose me of all the carnivores? Why didn't you ask Joshua or Xavier to keep guard? Why did you choose me? Isaac asked, confused. Xavier is too much of a loose cannon, and Joshua is too busy at this time, and I don't want to bother getting to him. You're the best option anyway. I see something in you, Isaac, Nicholas told Isaac with a hand on his shoulder. So, Isaac, are you in? Nicholas asked, still with that devious smile on his face. Isaac, stammering with words, exclaimed, What about my mom? How would she feel about this? We got that all covered. It's pretty simple, actually. Just don't tell anyone. Isaac was pretty good at keeping things on the down low, but never hidden anything from his mother before. Isaac, after long thought, finally agreed. Yes, I'll go. Good, pack your things. Don't worry, this trip won't take long and is relatively safe, Nicholas said with a grin. Relatively safe? Isaac screamed, now regretting his decisions. Chapter 3 A Fox's Den. Good, we will begin our departure at this exact time tomorrow. You should go home, get some rest, and don't forget what I said the other day, Nicholas told Isaac. Isaac then grabbed his bag and left the room, and as he was leaving, he thanked Nicholas. Nicholas, thank you for helping me the other day. I wasn't doing it just for you. I was doing it because it's my job as president to make sure all the students at Oakwood High School work together in unison and harmony, Nicholas said with a stern tone. As Isaac was leaving the newspaper editing room, he heard a voice call him from behind the trees. Hey, Isaac, mind letting me in on what you and Nicholas were talking about back there? Xavier said curiously. Nothing, just editing stuff, Isaac said, sounding defensive, remembering what Nicholas told him. Come on, you can tell me. I'm a fellow carnivore. You can trust me, Xavier said with a hand on his shoulder. There's nothing to tell, Xavier. We were just talking about work. That's, a, that's it. I gotta go. My mom will kill me if she finds out that I'm at school this late, Isaac said with an annoyed tone. Okay, fine. I won't bother you about it anymore, Xavier said, realizing he was not getting closer to figuring it out. Isaac, after a bit of walking, looks around and notices that there are no buses to take since it has been two hours since school has ended. Crap. I guess I was in there longer than I thought, he thought to himself. So he decided he was just going to walk home. Isaac doesn't live that far from the school. His house is about a mile away, which isn't that long of a walk, at least for Isaac. The city was quiet, which spoke volumes to the city's history and character as a whole. Isaac loved looking at the city during the night. He believes that it brings out all the beauty that makes the city so great. To the big clock tower that has been keeping time for this city for years, to the small family-owned businesses that hold the best food in town, this may seem like a regular old town to the common eye, but to Isaac, this was his home. And luckily for Isaac, he could see all the city's wonders, for he was a carnivore, and carnivores are nocturnal. There suddenly was a cold breeze in the air. Isaac closed his eyes and let the cold yet comforting wind touch his fur. Sometimes Isaac would go out at night and sit on his front porch to do this exact thing. When Isaac did this, it erased all the tension and all the negative things from his mind. It was just him in the night. Hey, little lady, what are you doing this? What are you doing this late at night? Isaac heard a gang member say. Luckily, Isaac, being a canine, has a great sense of smell and hearing, so he heard the man as if he was a couple feet away. But in fact, the noise came from an alleyway down the street. Isaac then ran to the noise to realize it was a couple of adult carnivores picking on a fellow red fox girl, not much younger than him. The girl probably went to his school. Come on, give us the money. I don't know what money you're talking about. Just leave me alone, the girl squealed. How much do you think a beautiful red fur coat will sell on the market, boss? 
one of the gang members asked with a knife near the girl's throat. I think about two grand, a member replied. Stop, Isaac screamed. Well, look what we have here. Is this your girlfriend or something, kid? <laughs> a gang member asked. The other gang member is laughing at his remark. Shouldn't you be stealing money from an old lady or something? Another gang member remarked. Let her go, Isaac said with a snarl in his voice. Or what, kid? Or else I'll, I'll kick your ass. Isaac said, not completely confident that he alone could take out three grown men, let alone carnivores. We do, we do, we do. Police irons aired. The cops! Come on, let's get out of here, the gang member said while scurrying away. Now it was just Isaac and the girl. We gotta go, Isaac said, grabbing the girl's arms. Why are we running, the girl asked. If they catch us, they can send us to prison, or worse. If a carnivore under 18 is found out after curfew, they can sentence you to a year in prison. The police are not exactly on our side. Come on, this way, Isaac said. The two then ran into a back alley and waited for the cop car to drive by. I think, I think we're safe now, Isaac said, trying to catch his breath, his voice having a small but still fierce growl. Isaac didn't notice this. His instincts just took over at, at this time. Are you okay, Isaac asked? Yes, the girl said, eyes full of tears. Isaac was amazed at how beautiful this girl was. Even at her weakest point, her beauty shined like the ocean on a crisp summer night. Thank you for saving me, the girl said. I'm just looking out for a fellow student in carnivore. We gotta stick together, right? Isaac said. Right, the girl responded back, wiping the tears from her face. Her tail began to wag with happiness. What exactly is your name? The girl asked Isaac, was walking away. Oh, Isaac. Isaac the Red Fox is my name. What about you? Isaac said, returning the question. Jada. Jada the Red Fox. You're the fox from the editing department of the news report team, aren't you? I got word from around the school that told me there was a nice fox that was part of that club, and it must be you, Jada said, blush beginning to blush. Hmm, I wonder how I never saw her around in school before, Isaac thought to himself. It's okay. I'm part of the drama club, so it makes sense that you don't see me around often, Jada said in an eager fashion. Well, nice meeting you, Jada. You should get home before you get into more trouble, Isaac told Jada, not recognizing her blushing. Okay, hope to see you around, Isaac, the girl responded back, abiding by Isaac's commands. Hope to see you around too, Isaac responded back. Isaac then began walking home now, just him in the night. Isaac, what are you doing out at this hour? Isaac's mom shouted out in anger. Nothing, mom. We just had to edit more papers than we expected and had to stay late to finish them, Isaac said confidently. Well, next time, call me. You had me worried to death, the mother said, beginning to cry. Don't cry, mom. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to upset you, Isaac said apologetically, hugging his mother. It's okay. I'm just glad you're safe. Isaac's mom said, wiping the tears from her eyes. Come inside. Dinner's ready. I made your favorite, Isaac's mom said, trying to lighten the mood. Egg sunny side up on top of veggie noodles? Isaac let out with a smile. Isaac's mom smiled in reassurance. You're the best mom ever, Isaac said, kissing his mother on the cheek and running to the table. Wait a sec, you're not eating in my kitchen with those ragged clothes on. Go upstairs, get dressed, and take a shower first, Isaac's mom said with a hint of cheekiness. Okay, mom, Isaac replied, then went upstairs and took a shower and changed into his night clothes. Isaac, while changing into his night clothes, took a look around his room. He recognized how small his room really was. Come to think of it, Isaac been in this room, heck, this house for most of his life. He's no longer that little pup he once was. Isaac, the food is getting cold, his mom screamed from below. Isaac then quickly snapped out of his trance and went downstairs to enjoy his dinner. Everything about his mom's cooking was amazing. The eggs cooked to a perfect golden brown crust, the yolk firm but still creamy. The noodles' texture was chewy yet still not mushy. A dinner to die for. Isaac didn't expect any less due to the fact his mom owned a small restaurant a couple blocks away. Mom said she could have probably become a professional chef at a five-star restaurant if the stars aligned, right? Isaac, however, wonders deep down that maybe if his mom was not a red fox, would she have gotten the job she always wanted? 
Isaac, after saying his thanks, then devoured his food in an instant. The food disappeared as quickly as it arrived, taking bites of food too big for his mouth. Made it just right, huh, Isaac? His mom said. She was happy to see her son enjoying her, her food. Mmm, it's delicious, Isaac said, mouth half filled with food. Anything interesting happened at school today? His mom asked. No, not much. I just learned about the Pred Prey War and how it began, Isaac said half-heartedly. Oh, that seems interesting, Isaac's mom said excitedly. Yeah, it was all right, I guess, Isaac said, not really paying the utmost attention. Well, at least you're learning something. Mom, I'm probably going to be coming home late for the next couple days, Isaac told his mom. And why is that? Isaac's mom asked. Just some school stuff, you know, with the news editor team. We still have a bunch of papers to edit still, and they're all due by the end of the week, Isaac told his mom. Hmm, okay, but you better not be hanging out with any hoodlum, you hear me? I didn't raise a hoodlum, Isaac's mom said with her hands on her hips. Mom, when do I ever do any gang-related stuff? Isaac asked his mom, confused on what she's worried about. I know. I know. I, I just worry about you, Isaac. It's a mother's job to worry, Isaac's mom said sternly. Isaac never was one to start things, but he understands where his mother's worries are coming from. There have been a lot of rioting and fights going around recently, ever since that one herbivore police officer killed that carnivore the other day. Okay, Mom, I promise I won't do any gang-related stuff or partake in any riots, okay? Isaac said, pleasing his mother. Now, after dinner, make sure you do your homework and go right to bed, you hear me? His mom demanded, still maintaining her kindly demeanor. Isaac's mom was good at keeping her friendly composure. It is one of the skills carnivores, especially foxes, need to gain animals' trust. Isaac, listening to his mother, wished his mother good night and went straight to bed after finishing his homework. Isaac, now in the darkness of his room, looked straight ahead at the ceiling, thinking about what the future had in store for him ahead. Chapter 4, A Fox and the Moon Today's the day. Today's the day I become part of the reporter team. For a day at least, Isaac thought to himself while packing up his bag for school. Isaac, hurry up, you're going to miss the bus, Isaac's mom yelled from downstairs. I'm coming, Isaac said while grabbing his bag. Love you, Isaac, Isaac's mom said while kissing him on the forehead. Isaac kept walking to the bus stop. I love you, Isaac, Isaac's mother screamed at the top of her lungs. I love you, Mom, Isaac said, rolling his eyes. Isaac began walking to the bus stop when he spotted Joshua. Hey, Isaac, how was news editing last night? Joshua asked Isaac. Joshua also doesn't know what really happened last night. Isaac promised Nicholas that he won't tell anyone what they talked about last night. Oh, Nothing. Just edited some papers, mostly about boring school stuff and whatnot. However, there was one thing interesting we found last night. It's kind of bleak, though. Oh, what is it? Joshua asked, tail wagging, intrigued on what information Isaac has. There was just another carnivore murder at downtown Central Park, and an herbivore police officer was the subject of this crime, Isaac said with a hint of despair in his voice. Man, I'm tired of this shit, Joshua let out angrily. Yeah. Me too, man. Me too, Isaac responded back. The bus arrived right on time. The two boys entered the bus, approaching the back of the bus as usual. Did you hear about that gang incident last night? Apparently, it was only about a mile away from the school and it involved two students. Isaac's ears perked up. How do they know about that, Isaac thought to himself. Isaac looked at Joshua, making sure he didn't notice. Luckily, Joshua was too occupied talking to some of his other friends to catch the conversation. Yeah, and I heard that the two students were both foxes. Isaac just decided to stay low on the subject. They could just be talking about another pair of foxes. Yeah, yeah, they're talking about someone else, Isaac reassured himself. Isaac! Isaac, come on, dude! The bus has been at the school for about five minutes now. Always in thought. Joshua thought to himself, shaking his head. You know, animals probably think you're crazy, Joshua told Isaac, but Isaac didn't care too much about the remark. The two boys got off the bus and went to their respective clubs. Isaac went back to the news edit newspaper editing department, and Joshua went to Beta Club. 
Joshua, being a stud, has a naturally superior intellect, but he doesn't like to boast about it. That's just not who he is. See you in a few, Isaac, Joshua said, waving goodbye to Isaac. See ya, Isaac responded back. I wonder if the news editor team knows about last night. Who am I kidding? They probably just skimmed through the articles and didn't even notice it. Isaac, my man, you made the school newspaper, man. Fox saves girl in distress, Xavier said, his finger highlighting the bold wording on the cover. I guess I was mistaken, Isaac thought to himself. No, 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 it's a different fox, Isaac said, shaking his head and hands frantically. Relax, man, the only animals that know it's you is us. Your secret's safe with us. For now, <laughs> Chess said with a chuckle. I heard the girl was a beautiful red fox, and apparently she goes to this school too, Bertie emphasized. Knock it off, guys. That's not important right now. We need to get these papers out ASAP, Mr. Troy told everyone. Yes, sir, everyone said in unison. After finishing editing the papers, Mr. Troy gathered the edited newspapers and headed to the main office. Great work, team. Papers finished with some time to spare. Two. You guys should start heading to class now. School officially starts in five minutes. Bye, Mr. Troy, everyone said as they were leaving the room. Isaac began walking the halls alone and thought. I wonder how much of the school knows about that incident last night. Hopefully this won't change anything. As Isaac was walking down the hall, he noticed one of his classmates. That classmate was Courtney. Isaac began approaching her, but she appeared preoccupied, like she was talking to someone. Isaac began walking closer to see who exactly she was talking to. It appeared that that person was a fellow red fox. Jada? Isaac said in disbelief. Oh, so you two know each other then, Courtney said with an exaggerated tone. No, 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 we're just friends. She's my junior, Isaac said quickly, making sure to straighten things out. Okay, whatever you say, Isaac. Did you hear about the play happening tomorrow night? Courtney asked Isaac. Actually, yeah, I did hear about it. What was it again? The Return of the Grim Reaper? Isaac said half-heartedly. Correct. And guess who the lead actor is? Courtney asked eagerly. You? Isaac asked, wondering why she's so happy. No, idiot, it's Jada. Courtney flared back, angered. Wow, that's great, Isaac said with a smile. It's amazing that a girl got the spot, let alone a freshman. They said that I did a great job at the trial and was exactly the person they were looking for. You know, with all the police drama happening and all, me being a strong-minded female red fox carnivore, I can empower the students at Oakwood High, Jada said, trying to gain Isaac's attention. Will you be at the show tomorrow? Jada asked Isaac, gazing at Isaac, awaiting an answer. Um, sure, I'll come to the show, Isaac said, not seeing an issue with the request. Great, see you there, Isaac, Jada said, turning around and heading to class. There was awkward silence in the room. All right, now that that's settled, let's head to class, Courtney let out, trying to break the silence. Right, he replied back. Good afternoon, class. Today we are going to talk about the Hungarian carnivore tribe, the teacher eagerly stated to the class. Yo, did you see that girl from the drama club? A random boy stated. Yeah, she was so hot, another boy remarked back at the boy in an exaggerated fashion. Hey, Isaac, did you see that girl? Hot, right? The boy asked Isaac. Oh, Jada, yeah, she's all right. Isaac half-heartedly responded back. Oh, Isaac, when were you going to tell us about your girlfriend? The boy teased Isaac. Isaac, although, does admit the girl is pretty. However, he just met her the other day. Isaac is not the type of guy to only judge on appearance. We are not dating, guys. Can a guy be friendly to a girl? Isaac said. The group of boys looked at each other and back at Isaac, trying to hold in their laughter. <laughs> what? I'll forget you said that, Isaac. Look, you're a red fox. She's a red fox. You're a carnivore. She's a carnivore. It's a match made in heaven, dude. You guys are something else, Isaac replied, shaking his head in annoyance. Hey, pay attention. This will be on the test Friday, and based off of last week's performance, it's your best interest to listen up. The teacher screamed to the class, trying to gain their attention. Ring! That's the bell, Isaac said quickly, packing his bags and leaving the room to stop any further conversation from happening. Those guys are so shallow, Isaac thought to himself. You can't just make assumptions that just because you look the same that you should automatically be together. 
That's at least what Isaac believes, but not everyone is as open-minded as Isaac. In this society, it is seen as normal to date or marry the species you side with. Mixed species relationships are seen as taboo, especially herbivore carnivore relationships. The relationships are just too dangerous by society standards. Isaac looked down at his watch. Oh crap, I'm supposed to be meeting Nicholas and the news report team at downtown Central Park. I better start making my way there, Isaac remarked, making a run for the bus stop. Downtown Central Park is about two miles away, and Isaac rather takes the bus than walks there. As Isaac stepped on the bus, the atmosphere changed from light to dark. Isaac took a quick glance at the bus driver, who was an old lizard, who, by the looks of it, was not having the best of days. Grrrr, the bus driver growled at Isaac. I'll just sit in the back, Isaac said, not wanting to get on the driver's bad side. Isaac turned around, now his eyes facing the seats of the bus. There was an old serpent who Isaac felt if you looked at her, you would turn to stone, and a middle-aged bull whose nostrils flared as Isaac walked down the aisle. Isaac quickly made a break for the back of the bus and quickly sat down, sweat pouring down his fur. This better be worth it, Isaac thought to himself, scared for his life. After a couple minutes passed, the bus came to a sudden halt. Downtown Central Park! The bus driver yelled out to the passengers on the bus. Thank you for the ride, sir, Isaac told the bus driver. Get off my goddamn bus, kid, the bus driver said angrily. Isaac then quickly got off the bus and began walking down the street. You came, a voice called from an alleyway. That voice was Nicholas, and with him a mini reporter crew. I didn't expect nothing less from a fox like you. This is your natural habitat, after all. You probably knew all the animals on the bus, didn't you? Nicholas said with a blank expression. Actually, I don't know a single person on the bus. In fact, I think the bus driver doesn't like me, Isaac said, scratching the back of his head. Doesn't matter. You ready to hear what, why you're here? Nicholas said with little care. Yes, Isaac said while giving a quick nod. Good. What we need you to do is keep guard while the crew and I set up our reporting station, Nicholas said with the same blank expression. Isaac then began frantically shouting at Nicholas, for he wasn't informed about this. Wait, Nicholas, how long will that take? I didn't sign up to stay here for long. What happens if someone comes around and spots you? Nicholas then grabbed Isaac's face, not allowing him to finish his remark. Stop barking at me like a dog. Nothing will happen to us, all right? We had a deal, remember, Isaac? That's why we have you keeping guard. You tell us if there's any trouble. Understand, Nicholas said with a serious look on his face. Nicholas then let go of Isaac's mouth so that he could now speak to him. Yes, yes, I remember, Isaac said with a hint of disbelief and hopelessness. Good. Everybody's on the same track. Crew, let's get this set up and get out of here, Nicholas. he told the crew while moving and pointing his hands like a director. Isaac now was alone in the dark. Again, just him in the night. Can't believe Nicholas talked me into this. Come on, hurry up, guys. What's taking so long? Isaac said with a worried voice. Tss, tss. There was a sudden rustle of the trees. Who's there? Isaac asked, fearful of what was hiding in the shadows. Isaac then noticed a mysterious shadow lurking behind a dumpster. Should I follow it? Isaac thought to himself, curious of what the shadow was. But Nicholas told me to keep watch. He'll be fine. It will only be for a sec, Isaac said, now following the shadow. As Isaac was slowly approaching the shadow, he realized the shadow was in fact a man wearing a mask. The mask had two eyes and two sharp teeth with blood dripping down it. The man suddenly began to run, as if he knew someone was following him. Isaac began running after the masked man. Wait! Isaac yelled out. Isaac, getting closer and closer to the masked man. The masked man ran into an alleyway. Isaac following him. The man was now cornered. There's nowhere to run! Isaac yelled at the masked man. The masked man began to slowly back away, but tripped on an old rusty can. His mask fell off and revealed his true identity. His face is full of anger and anguish. Xavier? Isaac said in disbelief. This was his classmate, his editing partner, his friend. Xavier, realizing Isaac was distracted, made a break for the exit and ran through Isaac. Oof! Isaac crashed to the floor. Xavier turned around, his eyes filled with hate. The beast has been unleashed. 
The war has just begun, he yelled and ran off into the night. Isaac, still on the floor, conflicted on what to do. The war has just begun? What does that mean? Isaac thought to himself. Isaac got up, brushed himself off, and began walking back to the abandoned news reporter building. When he suddenly noticed that the mask Xavier was wearing was left on the floor, it must have fallen off when Xavier tripped and fell. Isaac picked up the mask, stuck it in his bag, and began walking back. Isaac, good job keeping watch. I didn't expect anything less, Nicholas said with a pleased expression. Come on, everybody. We got to take the film back to the school to be edited and finalized. The crew quickly got into the news van, and the only animals left standing near the abandoned building was Nicholas and Isaac. Nicholas, what exactly did you guys record in there anyway? Isaac asked, curious of what exactly they were doing. Just caught some protesters in action, some graffiti, talked to some bystanders of the recent murders. Normal reporter stuff, that's all, Nicholas said with a hint of dishonesty. Okay, whatever you say, man. Can we just get out of here? Isaac said, too tired to really care if Nicholas was telling the whole truth. The two then got into the news reporter van and headed back to the school. While on the ride back to school, Isaac began imagining the man with the mask on, that face haunting his memory, the two pitch black eyes with a pair of razor sharp teeth stained with blood. Is this a symbol for something to come? Isaac thought to himself. Kid, you all right? One of the news reporter team members asked him. Yeah, I'm fine, Isaac told the news team members. The van came to a sudden stop. Quickly, after arriving at the school, Isaac got out of the van and started walking home. Again, it was just him in the night. The cold breeze again, running against his fur. Isaac was now at peace with his mind and body. Isaac began to approach his house. Isaac entered the house and quickly ran upstairs, took a shower, and went straight to bed. There, Isaac sat on his bed, looking at the stars above in his thoughts, trying to recuperate from last night. Isaac, are you all right? You didn't eat dinner, Isaac's mom asked, worried about her son. Yeah, I'm fine, Mom, Isaac said, trying to get his mom to leave him to his thoughts. Isaac, come on, you know you can tell me anything, Isaac's mom said, leaning closer to Isaac to comfort him. Mom, do you ever feel afraid or unsure of what's to come? Like you're at odds with what your role is in this world or how other animals see you in it? Isaac said, looking into his mother's eyes. His eyes looked just like his father's eyes, both reserved, but still burned as bright and compassionate as the sun. Well, that's a part of growing up, Isaac, finding out who you are and going with it. And part of that is realizing your role as a male carnivore, a male red fox. There will come a day where you're going to be faced with a challenge that is going to challenge your character. Are you going to let the world decide your character? Or are you going to decide and form your own character? Isaac's mom said with a loving smile. Both of them, eyes locked into the stars locked in each other's embrace, enjoying the cool night air. Chapter 5. Your True Self One, two, three! One, two, three! Excellent practice, guys. If you need to stay after to get some extra runs in, feel free to ask. Oh, and don't forget to stretch and practice your lines on your own. The drama club president told everyone as everyone began packing up and getting ready to leave. Great job at practice today, guys, Jada said with a wide smile on her face. Thanks, you too, someone else added. This year's performance is going to be the best thing this school has ever seen with you leading the show, a boy told Jada with a grin. It's not just me, guys. It's a team effort, Jada told everyone. Yeah, guys. We're going to make this year's performance the best this school has ever seen, Courtney added, a hand on Jada's shoulder. Jada smiled back at Courtney. Courtney, being an upperclassman, helps Jada stay organized and is one of the few true friends Jada has at this school, so Jada likes when she's around. The drama club members begin to pack and exit the room. Jada, you coming? A member asked. Yeah, just give me a sec, Jada said as she began to enter the girls' locker room. A group of girls followed just behind her. Jada was now next to one of the lockers, getting undressed. Hey, Jada. Nice job of practice today. Hopefully the show goes as smoothly as rehearsals, a girl entering the locker room teasingly said. <laughs> Jada sighed. 
Hey guys, how's it going? <clears throat> Jada fell to the floor, one of the girls pushing her to the ground. Her stuff now scattered all over the locker room floor. I know you think you're so clever and smart, putting on this persona like you're this good, go-lucky, perfect girl. But we all know deep down that you're just a little red fox bitch. So why don't you just go back to the ghetto where you came from? There was a silence in the room. Jada's eyes drawn to the floor on her knees. The group of girls laughing at her. Oh, look at her. She is not so beautiful now, is she? A girl added. Didn't your mom tell you that looking down at people can cause your neck pain? Jada remarked, gathering her stuff that fell on the floor and wiping herself off. For someone who's so worried about me and my business, you need to do some self-reflecting yourself. Jada quickly shot back. What are you trying to say? The girl angrily asked. Well, obviously, since you worry about me so much, you probably have some sort of self-esteem issue, and by the looks of it, you probably should. That makeup does not suit you, Jada said as she began exiting the room. <laughs> the other girls giggled under their breaths. The girl began to blush red with anger. Who do you think you are? You're just a freshman from the streets, a nobody. The girl added, face red from anger and embarrassment. Well, this nobody from the streets has a show to get ready for tomorrow. I wish you the best of luck in... What role are you again? Oh, yeah, you do the stage lights, Jada said in a cynical manner. This remark angered the girl. No one really stepped up to her before, especially a freshman of all animals. Hey, come back here. I'm not done talking to you, the girl let out. Have a nice day, ladies, Jada said before leaving the locker room. Jada was now outside the drama club building. She looked around and saw no one. I guess everyone went home, Jada said, looking at her phone to see the time. No biggie, Jada said as she began to walk to the bus stop to see if she could maybe catch a ride. You know what? On second thought, I'm just going to walk home. I don't trust the bus driver guy. Fifteen-year-old female red fox alone with a creepy old bus driver. I'd rather not take that chance too dangerous. So Jada started walking home, the sun beginning to set. I don't quite understand those girls' problems, Jada thought to herself. They probably would be a bigger part of the drama club if they just focused on themselves more. And even if they are part of the light crew, that's an important role in itself, Jada said under her breath. Jada began to look at her hands, her hands with sharp but nicely trimmed pointy claws at the end. Or maybe it wasn't the fact that I was the lead of the upcoming show or that people are seeming to start to like me. Maybe it's because I'm a red fox that people mistreat me. Maybe it's because I'm a carnivore and animals are afraid of what I can do, Jada said, acknowledging her sharp teeth and claws. Jada began to run. No, this can't be true, Jada said, as if trying to convince herself her words were true. I'm more than that. I'm Jada the red fox. Jada kept running, tears rolling down her eyes. She ran as if she could run away from her own self. Like if she ran fast enough, all the sorrow and disbelief she felt would fall off her. But at last when she stopped running, she looked at her hands, still the signature sharp claws looking right back at her. She then fell back on her knees and began to cry, for she couldn't run away from the beast she was. Jada? Courtney asked, running towards her to comfort her. What's the matter? Courtney asked while hugging her. I'm the matter, Jada let out. I'm the problem. I'm the reason that I don't have many friends. I'm the reason people don't trust me. Why did I have to be born a red fox? Why couldn't I have been born a friendlier creature like a rabbit or sloth? Jada asked Courtney, tears rolling down her eyes. No, 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 this isn't your fault. Don't listen to those pricks. They just want to get you upset, riled up, and capitalize on you when you're at your weakest, Courtney told Jada, holding her hand. Easy for you to say. You're one of the smartest and popular girls at school. People look up to you. Unlike me, people despise me, Jada said, head down. What? Are you listening to yourself? You're one of the boldest, most beautiful, compassionate girls at the school. I'm the one who looks up to you. You are a freshman who blows the auditions out of the park and becomes the lead actor. And to be honest, I think people are intimidated by the potential you have. That's probably why they treat you this way, Courtney said, offering her a hand. Jada began to wipe off her tears. You really mean all that? Jada said, her tail beginning to wag. Of course I do. I wouldn't lie about something like that. 
Courtney said while winking at Jada. This made Jada laugh. Now, come on, let's get you home. You shouldn't be out late like this. Didn't you remember what happened last time? Courtney asked as the two of them were walking. It was either this or take an old creepy bus. Your call, Jada said. I'll walk, Courtney said. The two of them began to laugh. <laughs> Courtney, how did you get so good at pep talking, Jada asked. Let's just say I have a friend who's a really good motivational speaker, Courtney asked. The two of them opposites but share many things in common. Chapter 6, The Night of the Reaper. Good morning, everyone. Did everyone get some rest? Mr. Troy asked everyone. I slept great, Chess said with a smile. Me too, Bertie said. How about you, Isaac? Mr. Troy asked, looking at Isaac. It was all right, Isaac said, not wanting to talk too much. Come on, Isaac, why so down? Chess said in a weird voice so as to cheer him up. Nothing happened, Isaac said defensively. <laughs> okay, okay, we'll stop bothering you, Chess said, arms crossed. Have any of you guys seen Xavier? Mr. Troy asked everyone. Haven't seen him. He's probably just running late, talking to some girl, Isaac said, his face buried in his computer. Trying not to think about the incident last night. Isaac may seem as if he doesn't care for what happened the other night. However, Isaac still had the mask in his backpack. Wondering to himself, why was Xavier wearing that mask? And what did he mean by the beast has been unleashed? Isaac thought to himself, the mask from the other night still in his hand. Isaac, dude, want to hang out at my place today? Joshua asked Isaac. Once every week, there is a club only day, which means school ends earlier than usual, as you would expect. And today was that day. Clubs are valued equally and in some cases more than the core classes themselves at Oakwood High School. Joshua, Isaac said, startled, hiding the mask behind him. Uh, I don't know, dude. I got a bunch of homework to do and... Why are your hands behind your back? Joshua said, interrupting Isaac mid-sentence. Oh, it's nothing. I'm just stretching, that's all. Isaac deceivingly told Joshua while pretending to stretch. You are such a bad liar. Come on, show me your hands. Joshua stated, not believing Isaac's fib. Isaac began to raise one of his hands from behind his back. Both of them, Isaac, Joshua commanded. Isaac raised both his hands, revealing the mask with the two eyes and a pair of blood-stained fangs. Where did you get that mask? When were you going to tell me about this? Who else knows about this? Joshua said, frantically pacing around the room. Joshua, calm down. Isaac calmly told Joshua, trying to relieve the tension. We got to tell somebody, Joshua told Isaac, fearful of what was to come. No, not yet. We will talk about this more at your house, all right? Isaac said with a friendly demeanor, patting Joshua on the head. I'll call my parents. My dad is home today. He'll pick us up, Joshua said while grabbing his phone out of his pocket. After a couple moments, a super fancy car pulled up and came to a stop. Is, is that a Bentley? Isaac said with a surprised expression on his face. Yeah, there goes my dad, Joshua said, waving the car over. The two boys then entered the car. The ride was a quiet one, with very little words being shared. Joshua's father began to talk, trying to break the tension. Joshua, how was the beta club today? Joshua's dad asked. It was all right, I guess, Joshua said, still a bit upset at Isaac. How did your test go? Joshua's father asked. It went well. I got a hundred on it, as always, Joshua said, unsurprised. Good. I expect nothing less from my son. As the car turned a corner, a giant mansion-like house appeared. The car began pulling up to the house. Isaac then leaned over and whispered to Joshua, You didn't tell me you were rich. I guess you're not the only one keeping secrets, Joshua said, still upset. Isaac then pouted, feeling sorry for not telling his friend about this sooner. The two of them got out of the car and began entering the giant house. This way, sir, a butler greeted them, gesturing them inside. You have a butler? Isaac said with a shocked expression. Yeah, pretty cool, right? My parents are pretty busy most of the time. We were lucky that my dad was there to pick us up just now, Joshua said unfazed. Isaac and Joshua then headed to Joshua's room, the butler leading the way. So, this is your house, huh? Why did you never tell me about this? Isaac said with contempt. Well... I didn't want you to be my friend just because of my money. I thought if I told you that you would abuse my money, Joshua said frantically. We have been friends for more than seven years. Why would you ever think that, Isaac said, now raising his voice. 
Well, that doesn't matter now. We both had our own demons to hide. Now, I told you mine. Time for you to cough up the information you have about that mask, Joshua said, trying to get back to the reason they came to his house in the first place. All right, all right. I'll keep my end of the deal. I'll tell you. And make sure to tell me all the details, Joshua said, now sitting on the floor like a child. I was keeping guard for the news report team. They said that it won't take long and that all I had to do was keep watch, Isaac said, keeping out some personal interactions with Nicholas and himself. I saw a shadow behind and decided to take a closer look at the shadow behind the dumpster. As I got closer to the shadow, I realized it was a young man wearing a mask. Huh? Huh? And that's the mask you were hiding from me? Oh, I'm sorry. Go on. Joshua blurted out in shock. Yes, the mask I was trying to hide from you. Anyway, I followed him into a dark alley. I had him cornered and there was nowhere to run. He tried escaping but tripped on a rusty can. His mask fell off and revealed who he truly was. Xavier. Oh my God, Joshua blurted out again. Joshua, shut up. If you keep interrupting me at this rate, we'll be here all night. Isaac said angrily. Okay, I'll stop, I promise. Lip seal, Joshua said, nodding his head. All right, back to what I was saying. He was cornered. I was shocked to see him wearing that mask. He was my colleague, but I guess everyone is hiding something. He then barged into me, knocking me over onto the wet concrete. And right before he was about to go back into the shadows, he turned around and started talking about a group. I think he said, the beast has been unleashed. Whatever that's supposed to mean... There, that's the whole story. Plain and simple, Isaac said, letting out a sigh, feeling as if he had got a giant weight off his shoulders. Plain and simple? This is not plain and simple, Isaac, Joshua told Isaac while getting off the floor. It seems to me that we have a little mystery on our hands, and that mask is the key to solving it, Joshua said, walking over to his computer. Now that you know my little secret, are you going to tell the whole school now? Isaac said, defeated. No, of course not. If we tell the school, the authorities are going to find out. And guess what they're going to do? Nothing. They're just going to file it as a complaint and never get back to it. Most importantly, I'm your best friend. If you go down, I go down, Joshua said, looking at Isaac with a smile. Isaac looked at the clock and noticed that it was an hour past six. Oh, crap, the play. I promised Jada I will show up, Isaac said quickly, grabbing his bag and heading out the door. But what about the mask, Joshua blurted out as he was leaving. Keep looking into it. Find out as uh, find out as many things about the beast you, as you can. Oh yeah, and Joshua, even if you were piss poor, I would still be your best friend. Isaac said before exiting the room. Joshua then turned around and smiled as Isaac left the room. I gotta go double time if I want to make it to the theater in time. Isaac thought to himself while in a full sprint. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Oakwood High Theater. It's a pleasure to have all the wonderful parents and students come out and support our amazing drama club. Today, we will be showing the highly anticipated showing of The Return of the Grim Reaper, the drama club director said, projecting to the crowd. I don't see Isaac anywhere, Jada. Courtney was walking towards Jada, coddling her. He's coming. I know he'll show. Jada whispered to herself, Jada, you ready? This is a big night, the stage director said. Yes, I am, Jada said confidently. Come on, come on, almost there, Isaac said as the show came closer and closer to view. Isaac, now able to hear the stage director say the prologue, ran to the ticket booth. One, one ticket, please, Isaac said, trying to catch his breath. Reaper, what hath brought you to this land, a kid playing a beast said. You cheated death. You drank us from the fountain of youth. Which in defying death hath turned your soul to a monstrous beast, the Grim Reaper said, swinging her deadly scythe, moving, changing directions with elegance. Isaac entered the auditorium and quickly sat down. I made it, Isaac thought to himself. Isaac looked up, eyes gazed, locked on Jada, the Grim Reaper. She took the crowd. When she spoke, it was as if she took the breaths and soul of every person sitting down watching. Catching the crowd with her elegance and beauty, she was truly as beautiful as the night. Re- Reaper, my soul now lifted from the labyrinth to now rest in the heavens of man, the soul cried out to the Reaper. This is the true power of fate. 
You may try to dodge fate, but fate will find you because fate is inevitable, the Grim Reaper said as the soul's eyes rolled back, dying in her arms. Your soul, now free, free to its eternal afterlife. The curtains began to close. As the curtains closed, the crowd roared with excitement. Woo! It was one of the best performances the school had ever seen. It was one for the ages. As the stage director called roll and each actor bowed, Jada glanced up at the crowd, trying to find Isaac. Jada thanked him and smiled. Isaac, still amazed by the performance, smiles back at her in gratification. It was a performance for the ages. Thank you.